Hi, I'm Owen. And I'm Lynn. We're back from our latest trip, which was a shakedown trip for a few big mods that we made to our Travato van. So how did that go? We'll tell you in today's video. We'll also answer a few of your questions and we'll cook up a Lote hot dogs on the griddle. So first of all, you may be asking yourself, what is a mod? Well, it's short for modification, but in van lingo, we just call them mods and we all make them. So what mods did we make? So to fully understand that, we need to take you back to the trip prior to our last one. It was on that trip that we finally gave in to the fact that we need bigger batteries and better batteries. And newer batteries. We also got very tired of not having a visible backup camera in the van. We also were tired of not being able to hear the TV when the fans or the AC was going. And don't forget our tires. Our tires were shot, noisy, bumpy, and they just needed replacing. So we took a few weeks off from traveling to tackle all these mods. Then we planned a shakedown trip to see how we'd done. So how do we do? Everything's perfect now? Almost. The good things, new tires. Man, everybody loves new tires. TV. And, and the new tires really made a difference. It's a lot more comfortable ride. A it's, lot more, it's a lot quieter. It is. It's, they're just awesome. Also, we finally connected up the Apple AV connector that we use to connect to our phones and iPads to watch Hulu and Netflix and other things. We connected that to the Jensen that was inside the van and ran that through the cabinets. And that was... Made a lot of difference. Before, when we had the air conditioner on or even the fans, it was hard to hear. But with the surround sound, it not only is easy to hear, it sounds awesome. It does. And the backup camera. Yeah, that's probably one of our favorites. I think so. You guys have probably seen the backup camera that we placed on the mirror. And it is a backup camera and it does help. But the thing it really helps is when we're rolling down the road. Right. You can see behind the trailer and behind the van. You can see when someone's going to pass you on the right side. You can see when someone's pulling up on the left. You, you can just, you get a sense of what's around you. And that's been what I've been missing driving in the van is you have no sense of what's around you, even if you don't have the trailer. And that backup camera, the fact that it's facing back and it's such a wide field of view, it's made a huge difference. And we really really recommend that camera. And if you want to get one for your van or your Travado, we have a link to it in our Amazon store and there'll be a link in the description below. So what were the things that weren't so good? Believe it or not, the lithium batteries. Why? They just wouldn't charge off of the alternator or solar, which whenever you're dry camping, those are the two primary ways that we charge the batteries. One of the first things that we tackled when we got back is to check those lithium batteries out and see what was wrong. And turns out, if you look in the magic black box underneath the van where all the, the uh, battery connections go, there are two positive posts. And I mistakenly thought that you could connect the battery to either positive post, but that's not really true. One of them's on the left-hand side of the relay, and there's another one there on the right-hand side. I had it on the right hand side before we left. When I got back, I simply moved it about three inches and put it on the left hand side of the relay. And just like that, we started getting solar charging. It charged off the alternator. And within three or four hours, we were topped off and we've had 100% uh, capabilities on the battery since we've done that. Right, and you know, only the next time that we travel will we know exactly how long the batteries are gonna last. But. Right now, it looks like they're a really good addition. Yeah. So on this last trip, we also learned that we really need to make our beds in the Travato more comfortable. You've probably seen several, if not two or three videos from us about making the beds more comfortable. But after 10 nights, my back was killing me when we returned home. So we ordered a six inch memory foam mattress. And we cut it to fit in the van. And hopefully that's gonna help with the bed comfort. Here's a little bit about how we went about cutting and placing the mattresses in there. This is a six inch memory foam mattress that comes in a box. Here goes nothing.
Okay, I think we've cut this $239 mattress. We've cut it in half, we've cut it to fit, and we've also cut the little gap out down here that should make it fit up against the wall. So now we're gonna take it back out and measure it again and see how we're doing. So we look, this is actually $214.83 for a short queen, which is what we need. It's gonna leave a little bit of a gap down here. Why don't you go show it's up them. underneath the ledge like the Travato mattress does. It's cut to fit this little cutout here. And then it leaves a little bit of room down here. You're not sure what we're gonna do with that. Mm -mm. We'll have to do something with it. We will. We'll figure it out. But you know what? It's already bigger than the mattress that comes with the Travato, but it's not bulky and a bunch of things on there like the one we had hodgepodge together. So it's already pretty good. And I think we're pretty happy with it right now. I think we're on to cutting Lynn's side now. Okay, does this fit? You darn betcha. I had a carpenter friend of mine that was famous for saying when he cut crown molding that it looks like it growed there. This mattress looks like it growed there. <laughs> it's all right. And you know, this one's six inches thick. The one that comes with the Travato is pretty coarse and it's only four inches thick. It's only two inches difference. But I've heard two inches makes a lot of difference. I don't know for sure, but that's what I've heard. What do you think? In a month from now, we'll uh, try to pin a comment and let you guys know how we feel about these mattresses after we've had them for a month or so. And then if you want to, click on the link and go get one for yourself. We also learned on this trip that we loved having the trailer. This is the first trip that we've taken it that's a long trip that we didn't know every place we were going to go or every campground or every turnaround. And we had to make several u-turns and and turn around and dirt <laughs> roads and there was only one time that we had the trailer that it actually kept us from staying somewhere that we wanted to stay but even then we were kind of yeah. iffy yeah. so with the kayaks on top and the bikes inside and all the room for the rugs and how quickly we can move from site to site we've determined that the bad things with the trailer as far as making us a little less nimble are far outweighed by all the good that the trailer yeah, provides for us. Most definitely. But as you've seen in some of the other videos, and if you haven't seen those videos on the damn trip, we'll put a link to the playlist down below as well. But you've seen us just put everything in the back of the trailer and change sites, like 10 minutes change sites, but nothing's really organized. Right. Lynn loves things to be organized. I do. I and like so when we got back, she said, we're gonna go to Lowe's and we're gonna pick up some things to organize the trailer. I was all over that, so off we went for a trip to Lowe's, and we'll show you a little bit about how we organize the trailer right now. So today has been a day that we've been reorganizing the trailer because it worked out really well during the last trip. Let me show you what we've done. I bought several of these gladiator rails and baskets to put things in. Our shoes and other things are gonna go in here, easy to get to. Our chairs hang on the side over here. The rug we use every time goes on top of this. The table that we use every time goes there. The room slides up through there. We've got firewood and other things back there and another basket along with the rug that we put inside of the room. And there's another one over here that right now all it's holding are fishing rods. Pretty neat. As in everything has a place and everything is in its place just the way Lynn likes it. And I think it'll work out a whole lot better. I do too. That's it's been, worked out really it's well. It's really worked out really well. So we, we've made really good use of this five by eight Sundowner Mini Go trailer. And I think you're gonna see it go on most of the trips that we go I on so. in the future. So there you have it. Those are the mods that we've made to our van so far. And you were telling me you love the fact that so many people share their mods with us too, yeah, right? Yeah, there's a lot of people in the comments share what they've used and how they tackle, you know, the things that they don't like. So, you know, it's... We've, it's a community. It's a community, and we really, really appreciate that, and we've used a lot of we them have. too. We have. We've listened to a lot of you, and a lot of you listen to us. You know, we travel because we enjoy traveling. That's what we aim to do. And we're always looking to take things out of the van or add things to the van or change things about the van and do those van mods to make things better so we can enjoy the trip better. That's our week in a nutshell.
But all those mods have prepared us to be able to leave tomorrow for another trip to test out the things we've done this week and to just lay on the beach and relax for a while. And that makes us happy. Yeah, travel makes us happy. Well, it's time to move on to the griddle me this section of today's episode. And what are we cooking? Elote hot dogs, a street hot dog that you can get, well, just about anywhere in California and in Mexico, but not in North Carolina until tonight. Why are we doing this? Well, it was a suggestion from our friend John from the channel From She to Me, who said after we cooked the roast beef, what's next? Elote hot dogs. And I have to admit, I didn't even know what elote hot dogs were until I did a little research and they looked really good. So I combined two or three recipes that we found on YouTube from other people that we watch and we came up with our own griddle me this version of elote hot dogs. The very first thing we need to do, we're gonna griddle some corn on the cob. Always one in there. We're also gonna make a sauce to put on top of the corn. Into the butter, we're gonna add a little kosher salt and a little chili powder. Mix that up. came into the kitchen and we're going to now prepare the hot dogs. What I'm doing is drying off one of these Nathan hot dogs and then I'm going to try to wrap a piece of bacon around this so it will stay. This is a rather long piece of bacon. Get it on there, give it a little squeeze and make sure it's going to stay in place. And that one's ready. Now we're just going to repeat that. There we go. Now we need to make a little magic sauce to put on our hot dogs when we're ready. First thing we throw in is a, a little mayonnaise. Into that we're going to put a little chili powder. And Deb, this is the not the kind that who crapped in the mustard mustard. This is the yellow mustard. Owen's right. We don't want any crap in our mustard. You guys need to make sure you watch from she to me. We love those two. Family that we've never met in person. And now I need the juice of half of a lime. And now we stir. Make a mess, boy. Make a mess. I'm going to have to take a little taste here. <laughs> what we're doing now is we're just checking this corn to see how she's doing. And that's what you want to see is that charring on there. That's going to give us a lot, a lot, a lot of flavor. Put the magic dogs on. This is not a fast cook because you want to turn the temperature down almost all the way to low because these dogs are wrapped in the bacon. You don't want to burn the bacon but you want to cook it slow enough that you cook the dogs as well. If you've had these before leave us a comment down below and let us know how you like to have them cooked. It's time for me to turn these. I'm just going to roll them onto the side. So far, so good on the bacon sticking to it. <laughs> Smells good. One more thing we have to do, cut the corn off the cob. We don't want to waste anything, you know. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, sweet corn, man alive. <laughs> uh oh, the hot dogs, I gotta go. Dogs are looking good. Bacon is crisping up.
normally put butter on the buns as we toast them but we have this mixture with chili powder and lime and salt that's what we're going to put on these as we toast them check the bread out yummy and off they come Dogs are ready. Now we'll go ahead and go inside, put the rest of the condiments on it, and show you what it looks like and give you a taste. Well, as much as we can without smell of vision. Or taste of vision. Taste of vision. That would be a good thing to make. Taste of vision. All right, All right, let's plate these up. First things on the dog a little street corn that we coated with our butter and our uh, chili powder and lime. Next, we have the tomatoes and onions and cilantro that we have diced up, and that goes on next. Cilantro gives me the wind, something fierce. Next, remember that sauce we mixed up? We put it in a little squirt bottle to make it easier to do this. A little bit of cheese. A dash of chili powder. And then on one of them, I'm going to put just a little drizzle of sriracha sauce. And that's all she wrote. And now... Taste test. Taste test. But first, just look at that. Is that not the prettiest hot dog you've ever seen in your life? Look at that. I don't want to eat it. I want to take a picture of it. No, I want to eat it. How do I do this? <laughs> oh, man. Are you going to do the Owen thing? Here's <laughs> my impersonation of Owen. <laughs> You're going to do your, yeah, Todd's impersonation mm. of Owen. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Mmm. <laughs> mmm, 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 mmm. Taste the bacon. You can taste the hot dog. It's got a lot of crunch to it. There is a little bit of heat from the sriracha sauce and the chili powder. But man, the corn comes through. Perfect, perfect meal. Elote hot dogs. If we're in California with you guys, John, we're going to go find one of these to eat. Until then, griddle me this. Best hot dogs we've made so far on the griddle. Elote hot dogs. These things are the bomb. We love them. If you're new to us, Every week we try to do a recipe that we can replicate when we're out traveling in our Travado van. This is definitely going on the list of things we can cook anytime we want to in the van. Check in with us again next Sunday when we gather around the griddle for another Griddle Me This episode. Until then, eat hearty and eat healthy and be happy. Do your happy dance when you eat. That's what you need to do. Do your happy dance. If you're new here, you may not know, but each week we try to answer just a few of the questions that you guys have. So if you have a question you'd like for us to answer, leave it in the comments below, and we'll do our best to get to it as soon as we can. This week we have three questions we're going to answer. So the first question comes from Barbara Whites. Did you disconnect that cute little trailer when you did your donut run? Well, yes we did. I wouldn't want to drive through Gatlinburg with the trailer. It's a lot of, there's a lot of traffic, but it was good that we could. We have a lock on the front of the trailer and the door has a lock and it gives us the ability to put things like our chairs and griddle and other things that somebody may walk off with. We put those inside of there and lock it as well. And we feel pretty safe leaving it there. The next question comes from Bev Bender. So what do you do with your wet shoes and wet Maggie when you return from a hike? 
Well, Maggie gets the same treatment no matter what. If it's hot outside, we'll just leave her outside with us as she dries off and she dries pretty quickly. But if she needs to go in immediately, we keep a towel hanging by the door. We can also use that towel to wipe off shoes or anything else and us so that we can go in without getting things wet. But by taking the trailer and by performing the mod to put all the baskets in there, one of those baskets is on the back door. And we plan to put our water shoes and wet things in that basket whenever we return from places, which will be really easy and really cool. Thanks for the question. Joyce Moses said, we love the adventure. Have you thought about placing a small ice pack on Maggie or maybe even a cooling bandana? Well, Joyce and many of you who love Maggie noticed that she was panting quite a bit during this trip. Part of it was the fact that it was in the mid nineties most of the time, and she just doesn't like hot weather that much anymore. The other factor was that we had her on a medicine called Glandex. And as we did some research, we figured out that Maggie must have been one of the dogs who was allergic to it or had a, an adverse reaction to it because her heart was racing all the time. So about halfway through the trip, we took her off of that medicine and she started getting better. Now at home, she's perfectly fine, but it's in the lower 70s, so we won't know until we get to the beach next week if she's going to start panting again. Many of you regularly ask us what our kayaks are, what brand, what model, what length. In fact, this week we had two of you that asked, Darlene Clopton and also RHC Face, Rage Face. Both of you wanted to know what kind of kayaks we have, what are the model numbers, and do we like them? Do we like them? Uh, no, we love them. We have an orange hurricane kayak that's almost a 14 foot sit on top kayak that I've had to fish in and we've taken out all over the bayous and in the ocean. We've had that thing for maybe five years and we've loved it. So when we were wanting to find a lightweight kayak that we could easily put up on the van or up on the trailer, the first thing we looked for was another hurricane. What we found was the Hurricane Skimmer 106 fit the bill. It's just a little over 30 pounds. It's extremely stable. Maggie can ride with me or she can ride with Lynn. I can carry one of them by myself or we can easily carry them with both of us on each end of it. They're easy to put up on top of the trailer. And as you can see from all the times that we've used them, it's not a difficult task to get them down, use them and put them back up. And they're extremely easy to paddle. They just glide like glass and, and, and we love them. So we have three of them. We don't usually take the big orange one unless family members are going with us. But the Skimmer 106s, which are 10 feet, 6 inches in size, I think they'll be with us almost all the time on any trip we take. Well, that does it for this week's Q&A. If you'd like to have your question answered, just leave a comment down below. We try to answer every single comment we receive. If you don't believe us, leave us a comment and we'll get back to you. And with that, we'll start packing for our next trip. One of the things we pack with us every week are the warm feelings we get from so many of you who leave us comments and are so supportive of the work that we put in to bring these videos to you. If you watch this video all the way to the end like this and you haven't subscribed, please help us out a little bit and click on the subscribe button. And if you want YouTube to tell you when we put a video up, which is probably going to be most every Sunday, then click on the bell notification. And like always, if this video helped you at all, or if you found some joy and comfort in watching it, Give us a like or give us a thumbs down, but don't do that. Don't give us a thumbs down. We have one person that gives us a thumbs down every time we release one. If you guys know who that is, let me know who it is. I want to send them some love so they'll quit doing that. But most of you are clicking on that thumbs up button and liking the videos. And that keeps us motivated to keep making videos for you. Next week, I bet we bring you some beautiful views from the coast of South Carolina as we head to the beach. Until then, stay healthy and stay happy. Get out if you can and enjoy the outdoors. Fall is one of our most favorite times. I'm betting it is for you too if you do any kind of traveling. We'll see you down the road. Oh yeah, Maggie says, happy tails. You wanna get regularly, reg, you wanna get regular, you wanna get bacon that is a regular cut. You don't, Oh, you so wet. You so bloody. Hi, I'm Owen. And I'm Lynn. And we're back from our latest trip, which was a shakedown trip for a few of the mods that we made to our Travato van.
That was our damn van, van damn, damn van trip. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Owen. And I'm Lynn. Hi, I'm Owen. And I'm Lynn. And we're back. And as soon as this thing gets a little bit of air, it will start expanding. Kind of like a mattress hard on. I can't say that, can I? I'll just do. <laughs> <laughs> you say a lot of things you shouldn't say, but hey, it never stops. <laughs>